Hey everybody, it's Bolshi here, back with another Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous build video. Today we're going to be looking at the Reaching Blood Rider. I've been playing the game a lot lately, I've been on vacation, and what I've discovered is that sometimes theorycrafted builds don't work out the way you want them to in game. You can have as much damage as you can possibly cram into a build, but if you don't have the reach and the movement to deliver it to your targets, it all goes to waste. Let me show you in this clip. This is my Wolgif. I've built him to be a vivisectionist. He's got a ton of dexterity, sneak attack, about five attacks per round. He does a lot of damage. The problem is he's going to attack one enemy, kills them, and then he doesn't have the reach to touch any other enemies. So after one attack, his turn is over and all his potential damage is wasted. And to make matters worse, he has to spend his move action on his next round to run over to the other enemy, and therefore he only gets to take one attack as a standard action. Again, a bunch of potential damage being wasted. Now going into Vivisectionist is a lot of you know a pretty min-max build. It's a very power gaming type build and it has the potential for a lot of damage but it's wasted because he has no reach. On the other hand here's my Sela. She's a very plain build. All of her levels are in Paladin but when she kills something usually she still has other enemies within her reach and she continue making her other attacks. And what's more, while you're doing mounted combat, you can move your mount's full movement speed in one round and still get a full attack. You're basically using your mount's move action to position yourself before you get your attack off. So this build is really going to focus on maximizing those two mechanics, getting as much reach as we possibly can, and also having a mount to keep us very mobile. What we end up with is a very capable damage dealer that really works well with any mythic path, and it's pretty beginner friendly as well. All right, so let's jump into the build. Now, our first level is gonna be in the Sohei Monk Archetype. The Sohei is a monk archetype that gives you mounted combat feats, as well as this really cool ability here. At sixth level, you get weapon training, and the Sohei can make a flurry of blows with any weapon that he has weapon training. Now, we're gonna be taking pole arms because we, of course, want reach weapons. And what this means is that we get to make an additional attack at our highest attack bonus every single round. So basically you get an, an extra free attack every single round um, that stacks with haste and everything else. So this is a really phenomenal ability and it synergizes really well with the build that we're trying to achieve. I'm gonna be going human for this build. Want that extra feat. You can choose any background you want. My abilities point distribution is like this. We've got 19 strength, 12 dex, 12 con, 14 wisdom, 14 charisma. We need charisma for our um, Blood Rager casting that we're going to be getting very soon. And um, wisdom is for the monk bonus and will saves and your physical stats for combat here. Skills don't really matter, although if you are going to go with the mounted feats, a lot of them use mobility checks. So make sure your mobility is maxed. Our first level feat is going to be Power Attack. Power Attack is pretty mandatory for any two-handed melee build. Um, what Power Attack allows you to do is take a negative one penalty on attack rolls for a plus two bonus on damage rolls. Now, if you're using a weapon in two hands, this plus two bonus to damage is actually plus three. And later, we're going to take a Mythic feat, which makes it plus five. Now, every time your base attack bonus um, increases up to multiples of four, you get to stack this attack and penalty. So for example, at base attack bonus four, you're gonna be taking a minus two penalty to hit, but a plus six damage, plus six on damage rolls, which would be actually plus 10 with the mythic power attack. And every four BAB after that, you, you take another negative one penalty and another plus five to damage. Um, it's a huge source of your damage and it multiplies on crit. It's just ma a mandatory feat. It's also a prerequisite for the cleaving line of feats here, and we're gonna be taking all of the cleave feats, so we definitely want that. Now, we're kind of locked into the horse as our pet, but that's fine because the horse is the best pet for this particular build. Uh, any other animal, except for the Triceratops, I believe, but any animal that starts medium and grows large can't be fully enlarged with legendary proportions, which is what we're gonna do later. So with a horse, you can actually cast legendary proportions on the horse and on yourself and still mount the horse, which is pretty pretty important when we're trying to maximize our reach. All right, our first monk bonus feat is gonna be crane style. Now I'm taking this, first of all, it's a great feat. We get extra AC, we get um, a better attack bonus when we're fighting defensively. But also most of these mounted feats at the time that I'm making this video are broken. 
So I'm going to stick with crane style. Now D and D and alignment don't really matter, but you are locked into being lawful. So you have to choose a deity that allows you to be lawful. At level two, we are now going to take 12 levels of Blood Rager. We're going to take the Blood Rider archetype. The Blood Rider is a Blood Rager that gets a mount, basically. And we want full mount progression. We don't want to have a weak mount. Uh, if your mount gets killed while you're riding it, then, you know, you, first of all, you fall flat on your face and you have to spend a move action getting up. Um, but you can't move around the battlefield the way we want to. So we're going to be taking the Blood Rider archetype here. Skills out of the way. Skills don't really matter except for mobility. Now when it comes to choosing a bloodline, this is where there's a lot of flexibility in the build. The only thing that's really important is that by level 12, we want to have the serpentine bloodline because at level 12, we get this really cool ability here, which is during blood rage, your reach increases by an additional five feet. So stack that onto legendary proportions and reach weapons and everything else. And it gets really silly just how far you can attack. Um, but we can also pick up the Serpentine Bloodline with Bonus Bloodline through a Mythic Power. So for this build, I'm going to be going with Celestial to begin with. And I'm doing that because I really like the bonus feats. And I really like the level 1 um, Bloodline Power. Which is that our melee attacks are considered good aligned. So they bypass damage reduction. That, so like DR 10 good that you see all the time in the game. And we also do an additional 1d6 holy damage to any evil outsider, and that includes all demons. So this is a nice little boost to our damage here. At level 3, we're going to go Blood Rider. We're going to take our next 12 levels in Blood Rider. Skills out of the way. Our feet at level 3, um, you don't get pet progression until level 5, so I'm going to take Boon Companion right here so that our Animal Companion isn't underleveled. At level four, we're gonna take Blood Rider again. Get our skills out of the way. Pick up Blood Sanctuary. Blood Sanctuary gives you a plus two bonus on saving throws against spells that you cast on yourself or your allies cast. Um, basically, it allows you to stay in melee and be able to make those saving throws. At level five, we get another level of Blood Rager here. We get our feet, which is going to be Cleaving Finish, and we get our first spells. I'm going to go with Mage Armor and Shield, assuming that there's somebody else in your party that's going to be enlarging you. Actually, at this point in the game, you, you really can't be enlarged. You can't enlarge your pet until level 9 with Animal Growth, so enlarging yourself really doesn't help. You can't ride your horse if you're enlarged. Since we're getting our Monk AC bonus for being unarmored, it's a good idea to pick up Mage Armor that you can cast yourself. Later on, we can take the Arch Mage Armor Mythic ability and make this even better for ourselves. Level six, we're gonna go another level of Blood Rider. And now our animal gets uh, level progression as we grow up, as we level up. And next spell here, I'll pick up Enlarge. We also picked up Feral Mount at level five, and this gives our mount a little bonus to attack and damage when we're Blood Raging. It's not much, but it's something. At level seven, another level of Blood Rager. Now we are gonna take this one's kind of important here. This is one of the reasons why I went with Celestial. Um, I really want a Fauxshard. A Fauxshard is a exotic reach weapon that requires a feat for you to be able to use, um, but it has an expanded critical threat range, which is really good for this build. We want crits, and uh, it's just a lot of fun to see crits um, popping off all over the place with this weapon. And now that we've taken weapon proficiency, we can take weapon focus with our bonus Blood Rager feat, our uh, Bloodline feat, and we're gonna take Weapon Focus for Shard. For my spell selection, I'm pretty much going with the um, self buffs and then anything uh, anything that's available, but, but really you're, you're only gonna be casting self buffs. At level eight, the point of strength, all of our uh, ability score increases are going in strength. We get second level spells. A great second level spell for defense is Mirror Image. Being able to cast that on yourself is incredibly helpful. Probably go with protection from arrows as well. At level 9, we get our next feat. At level 9, we are going to go with, because we had to get other things first, I'm going to go with outflank now. And we get another second level spell. I'm going to go with false life to give us some temporary hit points. 
assuming that you have people in your party that can buff you with stat increases like full strength, cat's grace, and so on. If not, well, if not, you're running a really light party, but um, if not, then pick those up for yourself. And we also start picking up another bloodline ability here. Um, at eighth level, we can re-roll the first skill check or saving throw once per blood rage, which is pretty nice with limitless rage. At level 10, blood rager again. We get some more bonus feats. And at this point, I'm gonna take improved initiative. Now, later on in the game, when I go over the mythic path, I'll talk about this, um, but at about level 11 or so, we're gonna take the mythic ability second bloodline and we'll take the serpentine bloodline. And we actually get to double up on feats. So you end up with a ton of these little utility feats like improved initiative, iron will, toughness, things like that. We get a lot of those. Spells don't really matter at this point. We have the good ones. Maybe resist energy for yourself, but I think we pick that up from our bloodline in a couple of levels. At level 11, Blood Rager again. Our feat at level 11 is going to be improved critical. And now with our faux shard, we crit on a 15 to 20. So basically we have a 30% chance of threatening a critical. Very nice when you're getting a bunch of attacks per round. Here I'm gonna pick up Greater Magic Weapon in haste. There aren't a whole lot of faux shards in the game. So being able to buff your weapon with Greater Magic Weapon, which increases its uh, enhancement bonus, is a very nice thing to have in the game. We also pick up that resist energy this level. 12, boost up your strength, skills out of the way. Spells, I think I'm gonna go with Rage. Uh, rage is a nice little buff. It's a morale bonus to strength. There's not a whole lot of morale bonuses to strength. It's a round per level, but what else are you going to take? I mean, I guess you could take heroism. We're not going to level into this archetype long enough to pick up the uh, bonus spell. Greater animal aspect. Protection from energy is good for yourself. We already got the good stuff. Okay, um, level 13 is our last level of Blood Rider. And our feet is going to be at level 13. We're going to take Great Cleave. This on its own is pretty good. As a standard action, you can make a cleave attack. And if the first attack hits, you'll cleave onto another. And if that hits, it'll cleave onto something else. And on and on and on. Um, until you hit everybody in your reach. Uh, which is pretty good for us because we're going to have a lot of reach. But really what we want is improved cleaving finish. Now, I didn't talk about cleaving finish. Cleaving finish allows you to make an additional attack for free whenever you kill something. Now, from my experience, your mounted reach person is gonna be doing getting most of the killing blows. So you get a ton of use out of cleaving finish and improved cleaving finish. We get some more bonus feats. I'm gonna take dodge. Two strike. We really have just about everything we want from those levels. We already have the good stuff. Oh, and at level 12, I haven't done the Mythic Path because I'm just kind of leveling through this with Toy Box. I haven't done the Mythic Path yet, but at this point we would have second Bloodline and we would pick up that Serpentine Elasticity where we, um, we get an additional five feet of reach when we're Blood Raging. But for our Celestial ability, we pop wings when we Blood Rage, which gives us a plus three dodge bonus, and we're immune to trip and immune to uh, difficult terrain and ground effects and things like that. So this is a nice little, nice little bonus. At level 14, and from here on out, we're going to put all of our levels into the Sohei. Skills out of the way, our bonus feat here. Um, now, we got a lot of bonus feats from our um, second bloodline, which I'll talk about when we get into the Mythic Path. So we can't take combat reflexes or dodge or improved initiative. Um, most of these are bugged right now, but when it's not bugged, I would probably take either Mounted Combat or Spirited Charge. Um, Deflect Arrows is also pretty solid too. Really up to you. We pick up Evasion at that level too, which is really nice. Now when we make reflex saves against things that would normally cause half damage, they, cost, uh, they cause us no damage. Very nice for a melee character. 
our feet at level 15 is going to be improved cleaving finish. Now, whenever we kill something, we get to make a bonus attack as a free action every time we kill something. So that's gonna be happening a lot. We also pick up key power extra attack and our key pool. So our um, half of our monk level plus our wisdom modifier is our amount of key points and we can spend those key points to make an additional attack every round. More Sohei levels at level 16, boost up our strength, skills out of the way. At level 17, we're taking our fifth level of Sohei. Skills however you want them. Our feet is going to be, let's see, what is our feet at level 17? Our feet is going to be Dazzling Display. We've pretty much run out of all of our um, offensive options, so we're going to go towards Shatter Defenses, which we do get to pick up late in the game, but we still get to pick it up. Style, style Strike doesn't really matter. This is only for unarmed attacks. I wish this worked with polearm attacks. It'd be nice to be able to trip, but it doesn't work. We also pick up Purity of Body, Immunity to All Diseases. Very nice. At level 18, we get our sixth level of Sohei. This is where we pick up, well, first of all, we get a, a key power. I'm gonna go with Sudden Speed. I'm not entirely sure if this works for um, your mount as well. I hope so. If not, then I would probably go with True Strike or Bark Skin. I'll test that. And our bonus feat at this point is going to be, I'm gonna go with Deflect Arrows. Now we pick up weapon training here. We're of course gonna go pull arms because we're all about reach weapons and specifically the Fouchard. And now we can flurry with our pole arm. So we get an extra attack at our highest attack bonus every round. At level 19, we're gonna go Sohei again. It's really up to you. However you wanna spend these last two levels, so you can spend them however you want. Um, I would probably recommend going with full BAB uh, pet classes. So you could go with Cavalier or you could go with, oh, I don't know, maybe I think you could go with the Ranger Nomad archetype if you really wanted to. Um, but I think I'm going to go with Sohair. And our feet at level 19, now that we have Dazzling Display, we're going to pick up Shatter Defenses. So now, and also at this point in the game, there's got to be somebody in your party that has Frightful Aspect or Dirge of Doom. So um, a lot of enemies, if they're not immune to being shaken, should automatically be shaken. And your attacks will be against their flat-footed AC. So. Very nice for added accuracy. And finally, level 20, we're gonna go eighth level of Sohei. Primarily, just to get another key power. Get some extra key pool. And I'm gonna go with Abundant Step. Now for our Mythic Path, this build could really work with anything. I leveled this on Toy Box using Angel, but you can use whatever you want. For your first ascension, I think that Instrument of Freedom is a great choice. Uh, Force Reality is another really great one. And our first mythic ability is definitely Limitless, limitless Rage. That'll allow us to rage indefinitely. Uh, the only thing that pre prevents us from raging indefinitely is that we get fatigued after every combat, but that's easily dispelled. At Mythic Rank 2, I went with Power Attack. This boosts that um, bonus damage from plus 3 to plus 5. At Mythic Rank 3, I went with Second Bloodline, Serpentine. At Mythic Rank 4, Improved Critical, Fauchard. And this will increase our Critical Multiplier by 1. Really big for the Fauchard because it has such a high crit range and a low crit multiplier to start with. This is a big increase in our damage. At Mythic Rank 5, I went with Mythical Beast for our pet. It gives it some bonus um, physical ability score and also it now ignores damage reduction completely. At Mythic Rank 6, I went with Flawless Attacks. Reduces the penalty on your iter iterative attacks by 4 instead of 5. At, and at this point, really, there's a lot of great choices. You can choose whatever you want. Unrelenting Assault is good. Leading Strike is really good. It marks the target um, every time you hit somebody in melee. And when somebody else hits them, they consume the mark and it does 1d6 damage per Mythic Rank. This is really good for Mounted builds because I believe that you can apply this mark and then uh, your pet will consume the mark and then you can hit him again and it will kind of go back and forth. So mounted builds can, can make really good use of the leading strike. Another good choice would be abundant key. 
and uh, maybe somewhere in there fit in weapon focus mythic for one of your mythic feats but you only get plus one to hit from this it's not that great you could just choose mythic abilities like i did here all right that's the build i hope you enjoyed it if you did please like subscribe and i'll see you next time bye